About 2,000 kilometers above us in low Earth orbit is a space junkyard. It's millions of pieces of space junk, most of it from us humans, all traveling at a very high speed. Recently, a piece of it fell and hit a house in Florida. Julie Payette is a scientist and a former astronaut. Hi, Julie. Hi, Matsumi. So, Julie, millions of pieces of space junk, estimated 6,000 tons of it. What is all this? How did it get there? Well, it, some of it is actually really, really small. Uh, some of it can be, a f you know, a fleck of paint, uh, pieces of a uh, uh, of a of an, uh, a satellite that doesn't work anymore. Use satellites; they're a bit bigger, uh, and uh, uh, things that are not used anymore. On Earth, when we don't need something anymore, we put it in a junkyard. Well, in space, uh, it's complicated to go and get it, and there is no uh, dump truck that comes. So that's why they stay there. And we only have a few options uh, what we can do with the space debris. Now, all this junk is moving very, very fast. So how dangerous is it for spacecraft? Well, it is because of the danger of collision. Uh, one of the things that we've learned many years ago uh, when we had uh, ballistic missiles sent from uh, three countries actually try that, to destroy a satellite in space, what it does is it breaks the satellite into pieces and every single piece goes into its own orbit at 28,000 kilometers per hour on lower Earth orbit and then becomes a hazard. So at least we know that we don't want to do that. We don't want to have satellites explode. So that's not going to happen because it hurts everybody else. Uh, collision with even a small piece uh, can be really uh, damageable because it travels at such a high speed. It's uh, seven times the speed of a bullet. Uh, so even a small piece of spacecraft coming in into contact uh, can do a lot of damage, particularly if you're a person out there working on the space station. You can well imagine. A piece of space junk recently hit a home in Florida. Why doesn't this kind of thing happen more often with all that junk up there? Well, actually, if I had been the guy, I would have gone and uh, got myself a lottery ticket because it is very unlikely that anything from space, lower Earth orbit, is going to actually make it to the ground. In this particular case, it was not a piece that just decided to come back and not burn in the upper atmosphere. It was a intentional release of a really, really big piece of hardware that NASA did three years ago. And their analysis had shown that all of it should have burned up in the upper atmosphere on reentry. But because we don't release big pieces of our hardware often, then the models are not perfect. And uh, we're actually going to learn uh, a lot about this uh, to make sure that when we deorbit bigger pieces, like, for example, if when we deorbit the International Space Station, that we will be able to do this uh, safely. Uh, without any hazard for people on the ground. And Julie, whose responsibility is all this debris? I mean, are there or should there be international space laws that say who owns it, who has to clean it up? Well, theoretically, whoever owns a satellite is responsible for it, uh, whoever owns anything in space, but uh, there's no real governing body. There's no rules, there's no law, so a lot of uh, People now are paying a lot of attention because there's more and more satellites being launched, more than ever in space. So there's a lot of congestion up there, even though things are very, very far apart. It's a very large volume. There's still a lot of uh, more satellites and uh, we have to have rules of the road or rules of orbit. Uh, so that what happens when there is a collision, who's responsible, who's liable, who's going to pay to replace the satellite? Well, uh that's not been well, actually, I know you're, you've told me that you're, you're on a committee studying just that, so we'll get you back another time to talk about the rules of the road. But, but finally tonight, Julie, is it time for us to start looking at space differently, do you think? Do we need to give it more respect if we're going to keep going up there? I believe we should have rules just the same way we've made rules in air traffic control so that we can take an airplane from Montreal and land somewhere else and cross airspace, national air, airspace, and the rules are the same. The way we get from point A to point B uh, is is under a framework and actually the, the it's a UN 
organization that is based in Montreal, IKO, that uh, has put that together and it works really, really well. We need something similar for space uh, for everybody operating satellites up there and for people who are, will be more numerous going to space. And very, now. very quickly, um, there is a new mission, right, coming up? We've got about 20 seconds. May 6th, if you want to witness history, watch at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daytime, the launch of Boeing Starliner. It's a new capsule. Two of my colleagues are on board to test it. Okay. Thank you very much for this, Julie. Pleasure.